And the typical process is that um, uh, it's pumped out to teachers in there to consume it, as Tom was saying. But we want to get teachers to be creating uh, courses and doing what they're best, do, doing what they do best, that is to teach <coughs> the technology. So for those of you for those of you who don't actually use Moodle, this is the way it works. You have a button called Turn Editing On, and if you have the right permissions, you can go ahead and you can add uh, a resource or an activity. And uh, there's lots of different things that you can do, but you put them together, the resources and activities, and you create a learning sequence to engage the student. So just add a resource, add an activity. I'm focusing on activities in this presentation. And within a course, you have uh, different rules and permissions, and this is common to all learning management systems. You have the person who can edit the content, uh, that's the team of teachers, and then you often have the non-editing teachers, um, and uh, uh, typically um, it's quite a frustration for them to get something that they can actually change and modify to suit their own student cohorts. And in Moodle, you also have the manager permission, but I won't go into that there. I'm focusing on the teachers and the editing teachers and the non-editing teachers. Now with a learning management system, um, there's a big problem uh, which we often come up against with this editing and non-editing dynamic. For the, um, the non-editing teacher, uh, they get a course which is locked down, so it's, it's very, very frustrating because I want to add a new activity, I've had this great idea like Simon uh, or Damien, but I can't do it. For the editing teacher, once a course is actually released, uh, if it, it gets changed, it affects everybody who's actually using that course. So there's a real tension. And we want to actually, as Tom was saying, allow people to bring their teaching ideas to a course. So what I'm talking about in this presentation is a way of, of addressing that from a design point of view. And what I'm suggesting is that we manage courses, not at a course level, but at, at an activity level. And Moodle 2 uh, um, is pointing in the right direction to being able to achieve that there. So I'll, I'll use some Moodle 2 lingo, but think about it from your own learning management system. So with Moodle 2, um, we want to free up creativity. So we look at using a feature called groupings, multiple copies of activities, and having the teacher editing role, as I say, on the activities, not on the course. And that allows us to still maintain quality control. So concepts, grouping. A grouping is basically in Moodle a setting which allows you to control viewing access to activities. So this grouping here allows this, this group of students to access these activities. This grouping here allows these students to access these activities. And um, basically have control over who sees what. So here's an example of uh, two activities. Uh, what are my assessments? And what are my assessments? Two same activities that can be customized for the CERT 4 level students or the diploma level students, okay? And if I wanted to bring in, say, in the same course, CERT 3 students, all I'd have to do would be to click on times 2 and I could duplicate that course, multiples of the same activities but for a different student group. Now, this is my point. We're actually controlling editing access on the activities, not on the course. So in Moodle 2, we can go ahead and we can actually take that non-editing teacher at the course level and give them editing permissions over the what are my assessments activity, just that one activity. And that frees them up to be able to create as a teacher, but it also gives that balance of locking the course down for administration and maintaining those quality levels. I just add the teacher and they've got editing permissions just for that activity. From a student's point of view, whenever they come in, there's three what are my assessment activities, but they only see the one that applies to their student group. There's three teachers using the same course, and they're all seeing each other's variations of what are my assessments. So it allows that collaboration, which is what I'm talking about, to come into play. Okay, so that's all the student sees who belongs to that CERT 3 group. Now the problem is, that's dealing with the learning management system the way it works at the moment. What I think we need to be able to do with learning management systems in general is to be able to configure, as I said, a teacher's course level editing permissions against activities. And with Moodle, we would use groupings. And we'd be able to, um, whenever we publish our course for the first time, 
provide the teachers with the, the base level series of activities which are well designed, which they can run with, duplicate, and customize to their own needs. And we would we'd like a filter whereby teachers are able to view each other's variations of those activities without editing on top of each other and impacting each other. About 30 seconds. Yes. Okay. So this here concept is good because it can improve this idea of people working together on courses with getting that balance between control and creativity. And it incidentally will foster that collaborative culture because people don't actually know they're collaborating. They've got the editing permissions that they need and they can see each other's work. And, uh, oh, another one. No, it's just, this, I think it's really important. I mean, the whole idea tonight is collaboration, yep. communication, and opening up you know, those traditional barriers we have in the schools, especially in Northern Ireland. You know, it's not just fighting for safety, but we're actually showing people what practice is going on in our schools as well. So, spot on. Thanks very much. Gahi, are you running?